So we have to hang on to our model. So let me talk a little bit about some of the stuff we've done and, and, and explain how it's changed. Um, Adidas Originals, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the brand. Um, we started working with, uh, with Originals uh, about seven years ago. And actually this was a, this was a story of business transformation. Um, but I won't talk about the numbers or anything like that just yet. Um, because I think everyone remembers it for what it was creatively, you know, from house party to cantina, street originality lives, and even to today to unite. You know, um, we're incredibly proud of what we've done with originals, but the truth is, what we did with originals, we couldn't do it again tomorrow. It wouldn't work. I'll show you what I mean. Are you coming to the party? I think it's having fun. Yeah, that was fun. He was fun.
us for the same room tomorrow and we said that will work, we'd be lying. We said we're hunters, so that it would be a lie because the nature of participation has changed. The idea of doing a campaign event with lots of you know, great celebrities, but celebrities that a lot of stuff for the audience to do. You could argue that now, too complicated. Too many things, too many touch points, fixed, you know, fixed destination, it's not how you know, our audience curates fashion anymore. So, five years later, is it certain? No. That's okay. And that's the point. Because we come back to this guy, and we ask ourselves again, a little bow tie, the beginning, the middle, and the end. How do we adjust that? How do we change a little bit? How do we account for that different nature of participation and of consumption? Uh, so that when it came time to do Adidas's campaign from London 2012, we could maneuver them into a place that other sponsorship brands couldn't go, is what I mean. There are pockets of our society that are not just broken, but frankly sick. In September 2011, we began a grassroots campaign to enable London youth. 32 talents from London's 32 boroughs became up in 2012. A series of 32 documentaries and local borough contracts showcased their skills. A track telling their story became a TV app inspiring others to do the same. Celebrities lay down the challenge. I'm giving you the opportunity to open up for me on tour. And an online platform gave you the chance to step up. So when it came time for TGP's day to stage, teenagers knew what it felt like. This gave us the language to talk about the games. Take the stage, take the water, take the track and the field. This language allowed us to create a fully integrated campaign that ran across numerous different media. A campaign that communicated about the games in real time. And responded to events as they happened. And it even allowed us to have a little fun. So during the summer of 2012, Adidas was the brand that everyone was talking about. Thank you. 
society, post circular society, where we all have similar backgrounds, similar heroes, similar bonds, similar products, similar services. We all live the same. You know, I want to cut some tips for you. And the problem with that is the most plans today we believe aren't designed for themselves, they're designed for their category. And that's a massive problem. Think about having hours, certainly in the planet in the room, then the crew room was spent, pouring over a brand pyramid, a brand onion, a brand sphere, a brand house. The incredible amount of time that we spent in the next individual words. But the problem is that even our own clients, even ourselves, can't distinguish between one brand and its closest brand in the category. Because this is about talking about products, communicating products as opposed to creating communications products. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Because the reality is that something truly transformational has happened as a result of that post democratization of everything. And unfortunately, it's not a good thing. Because post democratization of everything, driven by technology, leads to commoditization of everything. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But this is what we believe. In the infinite scale of creative development in human history, we're about there. In other words, there is a universe ahead of us that we have no idea yet what it would look like. And that's a massive problem for a creative agency, because essentially, we are still delivering the same type of media predicated, imagery based creativity that has existed for the last 35 years. Which is crazy if you think about it. Why on earth would the things that we did 25 years ago deliver the same type of efficacy as the type of things we're capable of delivering now? It's a problem. A massive problem. Because you don't just need one great, great idea. You need to work out how to navigate through this universe of great ideas. And those ideas are going to come from engineers and technologists from skill shows. They're not coming from within your creative department. I mean, as Doug will show you later on, the things that we're trying to do for clients today, they're just not part of our development of that skill set. So why is it as agencies, particularly creative agencies, we believe we're still fit for purpose? 100% certain or 100% lie? Well, this is one thing that we're 100% certain about. The simplicity of the beginning and middle and an end. And we think that the way forward is fundamentally that no matter what you create, experience, personal experience, you're sitting here listening to well, it still beats you watching it online, it still beats you talking about it. Nothing trumps experiences. Because ammo still matters. We are at the end of the day human beings, with very human needs, very human desires. We need to have the analog experience for things to become real. That's really, really important. So, where are we forward? Very straightforward. Maximum signal, minimal noise. Seems quite easy, right? Talk as loudly as you can, but very, very focused. As Simon was saying, we have tried to explore that like that over the years. It's a great success. So it means a lot of congruous and understanding when you say it doesn't work. But the point is, it doesn't give you maximum value. It doesn't actually allow you to drive business value behind the brand because you're stuck in the brand channel. And the brand channel, despite how creative we all are, can only we deliver 5 or 10% of the influence of values in the business. On platform, on the other hand, moving away from the inventory predicated model gives you the chance, like Gary Garcia said, not to just be the best at what you do, but to be the only people who do what you do. But not the nice. The point is, in order to be the only people who do what you do, you have to fucking do it. Because if you don't, you're just talking lies. So, why do we think this is the way forward? Because it's entertaining. People like doing this stuff. And this is a great example. This is not called Dreadful Crash Lights uh, that we do in Canada. It cost us $250,000 uh, to put on the first event. And the first event not only attracted 30,000 ticket paying fans, but it also got us 12 million bucks worth of media impressions for free. For free. Try designing that and you could have been. So, 100% certain this is the way forward? Maybe. But it's not quite easy as that. But here we are today. Alright, pass the mic. Yes, you may okay? <sighs> Quiet group. Excellent, I love this. It's Christmas. Christmas time, it's fine. Um, I don't want to reiterate too much what's already been said, but you know, this one point right here is really interesting to me. Is it's fucking scary out there, 
and, and I'm acknowledging this with the rest of you. This is such a scary, scary time. It's scary in that we all want to believe that there is this, this, this silver bullet out there, this magic cure, this pixie dust or potion that's going to help us when we're working with brands and clients really cut through the clutter. And the reality is it's getting increasingly difficult to do so. So I'm gonna call on a, a couple of things during, during the last part of this presentation to kind of bring this to life. Um, so if I rip apart anyone's presentation for what they're planning on talking about today, I'm sorry, but the reality is none of us really know, so it's gonna be a little bit of lying, so let's just call it out right now. Something like this. This is the classic Alice in Wonderland. She's reading a book about LSD in this case, but this is where our mindsets need to go. It's this crazy, weird trip that none of us prepared for at all. And if anyone here believes that they do know what's coming up next, please talk to me. I'd love to hear it, and I will call you out as a full-blown liar. Great, <laughs> so that's clear. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about that creativity is a commodity, which is a very, very interesting and dangerous thing. Uh, we go back in time, and, and we remember this point. If you wanted to get a beautiful photograph for your book, for your magazine, whatever it might be, you needed to hire a photographer. Remember that thing? Photographer, sorry. But you did, right? And that person was trained in Photoshop, and those people were limited. Ooh, I know Photoshop, it's amazing. My daughter, who's 11 years old, knows Photoshop now. She can take a picture. It's become a commodity, which is kind of a dangerous thing because we're supposed to be producing creative work for a living. Interesting. This one right here, Time Magazine. Um, the cover, the cover, we were talking about the big hurricane that swept through the East Coast. This was taken to Instagram. And then some of are saying, well, that's not really a problem. It's just, you know, one off, okay? How about the fact that the Chicago Tribune just laid off their entire photography staff? All of them. And the rationale behind this is, why do we need photographers anymore? All of the reporters have cell phones. Think about that for a second. These people had jobs. They were creating news, creating beautiful images, and now they're all gone. Now, if we're going to extrapolate and think a little bit more about that, what does that mean for what we do collectively for a living, creativity? Can this go down the same exact road? And if so, there'll be very, very few people at Eurovest in the coming years, which would be very sad because we like it here in Portugal. Lovely, warm. So, it's fucking scary. Let's just call it out right now. And that's fair. Photography is fucked. Calling it out. Let's talk about the digital landscape. Everyone here, any planners here? Of course, we have this connection plan. We're gonna put it up on Facebook, we're gonna put it up on YouTube, we'll tweet a little bit and everything's fine and dandy. Great. You got it all covered? Because this is what the modern ecosystem looks like right now. You got this covered? You know what this all means? Again, if you do, please tell me, because I have no fucking clue how in the hell I would possibly cover all of these bases in order to deliver real value for my clients. Real value. Not just basically this fade value or pretend value that we create. Digital's kind of fucked. Fair enough. So this quote, forgot I was watching recording, sat through the commercial. This is the way people feel right now. So all of this labor of love that we established with these beautiful shiny TVCs, nobody cares about them anymore. And then we think we can put them out on YouTube and people watch it there. They don't care about that either. So what's gonna happen here? TV's fucked. Great, TV's fucked. Digital's fucked, photography's fucked. Shit. Sure. But you know what? At least we still have a strong agency at this point, and I believe in the future. I know it's to be true. My clients will stick with me through thick and thin. This is what's gonna happen. It's 100% true because we are lovable, and in some cases, handsome, which is terrific for us. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, this is the problem. Um, this is actually from Soda right here, talking about um, some of the prognostication that's coming up here. 62% of clients are gonna be doing um, more work. Internal resources. Great news for us on the agency side. But, I think it's gonna be okay because we can still make money off of our clients. And that's gonna be fine, we have big retainers, we love retainers, it's so good, bring it on. Wait, Mark's gonna be kind of crazy. Oh, project relationships, number one investment for the coming years. Yes. More projects where I don't know what's gonna happen after that project and there's no retainers. Okay, so that's getting a little fucked up. The revenues are fucked up. Yeah, you can see where this is going here. Very, very, very dangerous times. The nice thing is that we had simply have it figured out. And I'm gonna share it with you shortly. And one of the things we believe very solidly in is that Facebook is where it's at, especially for millennials, some of these great work we should. It is going to crush it. You guys have heard of Facebook? Anyone here? Cool, great. Then we started looking at some of the numbers here and we saw 
wait, uh, you guys have seen this, right? There's a problem here. But the problem is, is that all of these millennials, these young kids that buy products and services, they're leaving Facebook really fast. Okay? But what does it matter? I, I, I don't really care about it. I, I live in the Netherlands, I'm sure it's really strong there. Oh, biggest declining active users is 52%. In the third quarter, in the Netherlands. All right, so all of these kids that were there, they're gone now. And where are they going? You know, where are they going? I bet you it's Tumblr. Remember, last year we all know Tumblr platforms. It was great, it was amazing. People could contribute photos. I love Tumblr. And we know this is the way to go. 100% certain? Shit. <laughs> Tumblr, not on the list. It's terrible. But. There's good news. We knew in advance that the next big thing after Facebook and Tumblr was of course going to be Snapchat. Because who didn't believe or understand in the future that you'd be able to post a photo and it would basically blow up within 10 seconds and that's why everyone would leave. That makes perfect sense. Weird logic. So nobody knows what is next. Nobody knows. Apps that basically create photos that explode within 10 seconds? What the fuck am I supposed to do with my life at this point, people? I'm not that handsome, I'm not that charming, I'm screwed. <sighs> okay. Can we agree on this? But thank God, thank God, we still have some really cool stuff that we can do. Really cool stuff. Anybody from a digital agency here? Digital agency people? Great. You remember this website? I love this thing. Purple phone from Nike. This thing is beautiful. You know, you spend four or five months building this thing out, maybe invest about a half a million bucks, and you have a beautiful website. And this thing could not be replicated. 100% cannot be replicated. No way, no how. Oh, shit. Create a market. I can buy a full responsive HTML website. I'm including the PSDs, by the way, in case any designers want access to it to templatize it. And that'll cost you $13. But the problem is. <laughs> 13 bucks, right there. And it actually looks pretty good, check it out. So these things that we think are so precious to us, this creativity, right? What we put into our hearts, souls, while we're weekends is becoming a commodity. Very, very dangerous stuff. So there is a solution, we'll get to that. It's not all doom and gloom, just mostly doom and gloom. Big difference. Platforms are fucked. Content though, what is content? Yeah, right? So if I'm Mr. Kanye West, right, I can make a video where I'm having sex with my girlfriend on a motorcycle, right? People will love that shit. I'll, have this, I'll own the internet, right? I'll own it. Let's check it out. Close your eyes and let the world paint a thousand pictures. One good girl is worth a thousand pictures. Here's the thing. So Kanye West makes this video. How long did it take for these guys to put this video together right after him stealing all of the thunder? So now someone has co-opted this content that's so amazing and stolen all this. Same for the Jean Claude Down spot. How long did it take? Next thing you know, someone's ripped that thing off and so forth and so on. Miley Sally's record wrecking ball. And at this point, that thing the snap or the chat roulette version. So even if we create great stuff, someone actually is going to take this stuff, steal it, rip it off, convert it, and change it, and then they're going to receive the thunder from that. So content, it's kind of fucked. <laughs> All right. Experiences. Experiences. You're right, right? Thank God. Because you know what? This is amazing, right? Amazing. Look what we did at this thing. It's incredible. Holy Jesus. There's a million people watching this thing live stream. That's not even talking about the people that watch it after the fact. Now, the thing that's really important is we do believe in experiences. And this is one thing that we are believing and we're going to say is 100% true. The ability to interact with brands, really touch it, have fun with it, enjoy it. This is lovely. However, this was a two-year journey that required $50 million of the client's money in order to come to fruition. How many brands out there are bold enough to do this? How many? And so we collectively, if we believe in experiences, we need to actually treat this as real projects that require real time and patience to pull this off. I'm so tired of seeing presentations where everyone's talking about rebel status. Great, but you won't do it. You won't. There's 
time, money, dedication, practice, doesn't happen. But this is something that's really interesting. So when we talk about experiences, they're tricky, not fucked. There's one for you. One for you. So, question to the audience. When we talk about Rebel Stratus, when we talk about these really complicated products that are not traditional print or TV, radio, out of home, how would I possibly create this stuff by putting a copywriter and an art director on it? The classic team that's been there since the dawn of time. You know the answer? Bueller. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the one thing that we do believe. 100% truth, no lies. This is the answer that I was referring to. Okay. It might look really scary, but I want you to remember this from basic science. This right here is where it's at. This is the scientific process. This is how we do things, right? Put a little rigor in science behind what we do for a living, which is so fun and jovial. We have an observation. I think it would be cool to do X, Y, or Z. Then we basically try experimenting with this thing. We test it out. We go through iterations trying to figure out if it's possible. Is it going to be you know, something that people are going to adapt to? Is it going to be something that's contagious? And if it's not, we don't stop there. Right? We go back and revise our hypothesis. We go through another round until, in fact, we have something substantial. Because we don't know what's going to be next. We don't know if it's going to be an application that will melt somebody's phone after you send a message. Why not? We don't know what's going to be, so we have to experiment along this process. And this is something that I would, I would basically really hope that you guys would do. It's expensive. We have to be okay with failing. We have to be okay with investing in research and development, rapid prototyping, all this fun stuff. And then the question becomes, who pays for it? Does the client pay for it? Does the agency pay for it? I don't know the answer to this, but what I do know is that the cost of not investing in this and going through the internet process means that we do not exist anymore. Right? I like going out for fancy cocktails. I love it. I like staying in those hotels. It's beautiful. And if, in fact, we don't collectively do this, we're collectively fucked, and not collectively fucked in a good way. In a bad way, there's, there's a difference. So, recruitment, experience, amplification, 100% truth. A lot of the other stuff, 100% lies. You guys can sort out which one is which. But, I'm going to leave you with um, something that we're very proud of, that we think is um, something that's very, very interesting. It was something that was a beautiful labor of love for us, which is the newest campaign that we did for Absolute. And within this campaign, we really, really tried very hard to take these tenets and bring them to life through experimentation, by working with people really trying to create a movement and change the brand from a brand that was just talking and having a monologue to developing a dialogue. So I'll let you see. In 2013, Sibley was tasked with recruiting the next generation of absolute drinkers around the world. But for absolute, the game had changed. A classic appetite for folks would no longer cope with the millennials, but whom absolute was not a top of mind brand. Our ambition, recruit these forward thinking urban millennials by empowering them to transform today. First, we announced Absolute's new relief. We sought out globally relevant artists who would time on the heels to challenge their own status quo. We selected four artists whose work epitomizes the daily spirit of transform today. We created an array of multimedia content that invited millennials into the store and we led local markets to create a slow campaign with endemic global forms. Vivid out of time of print and point of sound material. And most importantly, an immersive community experience with life. We introduced our beliefs by transforming entire neighborhoods in New York and San Francisco with the help of dozens of artists in the absolute global canvas project. At the new absolute.com, it uses us to take a deeper dive into the artist's stories and their creative processes.
simple branding experience is planned. From 2014 to 2018, we will be a habit of the world of fans around the world. Transform today will take in a deep white branding experience in Sao Paulo and New York in 2014. We're bringing more fans around the world and empowering them all to transform today.